Welcome to Weiss Software's Visual Cam video series. In this video, you will learn all about netlist comparison. Graphical netlist comparison allows you to visually compare your design data against the original netlist. Visual Cam performs the comparison automatically, and all violations are stored in the navigator like DRC violations. This means you can quickly scan through and fix any connectivity issues. Note that VisualCam supports the Cadence Allegro Net Short method of specifying intentional net shorts. See External Nets in the VisualCam online help for more information. To run netlist comparison, you will load a job into VisualCam, generate an internal netlist, and then load in an external netlist from one of the following formats IPC D356, IPC 2581, ODB++, or PADS ASCII. Note that if you are importing an IPC 2581, ODB++, or PADS ASCII database for the purposes of verifying their own netlists against the artwork data within the file, you have the option to automatically run a netlist comparison during the import of those databases by checking the box Run Netlist Compare. I'm going to be comparing an IPC D356 netlist, so I'm going to choose Cancel. See the VisualCam online help for more information on these or any of the topics mentioned in this video. Before you can compare netlists, it is important to prepare your data beforehand. To begin, load or open your data by using the File, Import, Import Wizard to import your Gerber data and NC Drill or File Open to open a previously created VisualCam.VCAM file. Then, using the Setup Layers command, or the Navigator, make sure that each layer in your file is tagged with the correct layer type. This is required so that the system understands what each layer is. Next, you should create a select group of any extraneous data on your electrical layers that is outside the perimeter of the border. Items in this select group will be ignored during netlist generation and compare. Use the Edit Select New Group command. In the Select filter, choose Window Mode. Window around any data outside the border such as title blocks, targets, crop marks, etc. The command stays active so you can continue to window around any additional data. Press the Escape key on your keyboard to exit the command. We recommend that any documentation for the board be placed on a separate drawing layer. This includes mechanical drawings and hole charts. Placing it on a drawing layer assures it will not interfere with any processing, such as netless generation. Verify that your pads are flashes rather than drawn pads. You can quickly see if you have drawn pads by turning the flash and draw colors to contrasting colors. If you have any drawn pads in your database, select one of the Tools, Convert, Drawn Pads commands to convert them to flashes. It is very important that all of your layers are aligned properly. To do this, use the Analysis DRC DFF Layer to Layer Registration command. In the Layers to Check window, select the layers that you want checked. In the Through Hole Drill Layer box, select the Drill Layer. In the Analysis Type window, open the DFF folder and check the Layer Registration box. Click on the Run button to run the command. You will be prompted with No Errors Found, or if errors were found, you will be prompted with Errors Found. To view the errors, go to the Analysis tab in the Navigator. If any layers are misaligned, use the Edit Align Layers command to align them. In the Navigator, I can see that Layer 2 is reported as being misaligned. So in the Colors bar, I turn on Layer 2, which is the top layer, and Layer 7, the bottom layer. Click on an item on the bottom layer to use as the master reference point. Then click on the item on the top layer that corresponds to the reference point. You will be prompted to confirm. Choose Yes and all data on the top layer 
will now be aligned with the bottom layer. Press the Escape key to exit the command. To generate a clean net list, it is also important that you don't have any duplicate pads stacked on top of each other. To remove any redundant pads, use the Tools, Pad Removal, Stacked command. In the Stacked Pad Removal dialog, choose All Layers and set a small tolerance if you want any pads that are offset from each to be considered stacked. Click on OK to run the command. You will be prompted if any stacked pads were found. Choose Yes to remove them. Now that we have clean data, select the Tools, Netlist, Generate command, or use the Navigator shortcut command to generate an internal netlist from your data. Next we need to import the external netlist using the file Import Netlist IPCD 356 IPC 2581 ODB++ or PADS ASCII commands. Choose the appropriate file format depending upon where your golden netlist resides. After you import the netlist, a new external net layer is created. Viewed by itself, this layer appears to contain no data. However, this layer contains the external netlist information and links the external net points to the appropriate top, inner, bottom layer net test points. To view the points, turn on the associated top, bottom, and inner layers, and the external net layer. The net points are displayed in four ways for easy reference. Select the Analysis Netlist Compare command. After performing the analysis, discrepancies are automatically displayed in the navigator, which you may use to view the errors in the workspace and print reports. Double-click on the error in the Navigator to view it in the workspace. The Visual Cam internal net in question is highlighted and zoomed to fit the screen. The external net points are shown in a unique color for each net. The external net point graphic colors are arbitrary. If necessary, you can change the highlight, draw, and flash colors for the layers you are looking at for better contrast and easier visibility by going to the Options, Configure, Display dialog. In this example, a net short was detected. The external net point symbol is the arrow pointing up, so we know the error is on the bottom side. Also, the external nets are shown in different colors for each net. Here we can clearly see that these two nets are shorted together, where the external net shows that they are supposed to be two separate nets. I also have a net open. Double click on it to view the error. The layer that the error is on needs to be visible to see the error. So if you do not see the error after double clicking, verify which layer the error is on by looking in item properties. Once I turn on the top layer, I can see the external net symbol pointing down, which again means the error is on the top side. This net open error shows us that our internal net list has two nets where the external net list shows this as one net. To aid in finding opens or shorts, you can use the pinpoint error command to find the location of the error more quickly. Right click on the error in the navigator and select pinpoint error. The system will give you possible locations of errors and add this to the navigator under the error on the analysis tab. Click on each to help you find the problem. Verify each error and determine the best way to fix it, or if you determine that a particular error is OK, right-click on the error and choose Ignore Error. The next time you rerun the netlist compare, the ignored errors will not show up on the list. Once you have fixed all errors, you should then rerun the netlist compare command to verify that the fix was accurate. Once no more errors exist, you can use the Tools, Netlist, Apply External Net Names command to apply the external net names to the database if you wish. This completes the Netlist comparison video in Weiss Software's VisualCam video series.